Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. news in the streets join us and tune in for the tea breaking news with integrity so sir your friends and your family it's the lovely tv show bringing you good tea and good vibes it's the lovely tv show be sure to share like and subscribe i want to talk about this mess that is called the the kamala harris <laughs> democratic campaign rally that took, I believe it took place in Atlanta, if I'm not mistaken. This was just a hot mess. I wasn't feeling it, and I'm not going to pretend like I was feeling it. Um, everybody knows I'm not a big fan of Meg Thee Stallion. That's not a, really a secret on this channel. Not a big fan, but it's no shade towards Meg at all. Um, she was invited to do something, and she did that. Um, so we're going to watch this real quick. We're going to watch Meg slightly twerk at <laughs> Kamala Harris rally and then uh Quavo came out there and he said a few things too so let me go ahead here and share my screen give me just a second I thought this was interesting okay let's see make it a bit more oh no I have to do it this way all right so let's start with Quavo since we got him up first so this was him talking about the situation. If y'all don't know me, I go by the name of Quavo. Born, born and raised in the north side of Atlanta, home of the Migos. Um, this city has always been home to me from playing in the streets and, you know, nurturing me and teaching me how to be the man I am standing before you. So, um, I mean, one of these issues that I care about is is, is resolving the gun violence issue. And you can't understand the struggles of gun violence if you're not in the field or in the heart of it. So one thing I learned about working with Vice President Harris is she always stand on business. From inviting me, from inviting me, what's up mama? Uh, from inviting me to the White House last year to discuss these solutions to passing, to passing the biggest gun safety laws to date. A lot of people are saying that it's low. I have it turned up. Let me, let me pull it up on my Instagram page and see if it's better, because this one is really low. And I want y'all to hear Quavo's, you know, just, oh, awe-inspiring uh, speech. Let me see. Let me pull it up on my page. Let me see if it's a little bit louder on here. I go by the name of Quavo, born, born and raised in the north side of Atlanta, home of the Migos. Um, this city has always been home to me from playing in the streets and, you know, nurturing me and teaching me how to be the man I am standing before you. So, um, I mean, one of these issues that I care about is, is, is resolving the gun violence issue. You can't understand the struggles of gun violence if you're not in the field or in the heart of it. So one thing I learned about working with Vice President Harris is she always stand on business. <laughs> from inviting me, from inviting me, what's up, mama? Uh, from inviting me to the White House last year to discuss these solutions to passing, to passing the biggest gun safety laws to date. So it's only right in the birthplace of the culture. It's also the same place to launch the first African-American woman to run for president. Yeah, we changing the culture again. So if you never voted before, make sure you get out and vote right now because it's the real one. And in the words of my brother Takeoff, let me get a Kamala. I'm going to hand it over to Tyler the Green. I'm going to hand it over to Tyler Green, let him talk about his vote and introduce the next president of the United States of America. Yes, sir. 
Child. Okay. All right. So that was Quavo. But you know what? Let me keep it real. You know how, like, what would be a better way to kind of stop the gun violence or minimize it? How about instead of saying, Kamala, how about you talk to your fellow rappers to stop rapping about killing other black men? And to stop rapping about gun violence because the music, you know what I'm saying, that has a bigger impact. You know, that goes into your subconscious. So how about we stop talking about killing other black people? I think that would do more than even voting for Kamala. But, you know, what, what do I know? So now after Quavo's, you know, eye-inspiring speech, Megan got up there. <laughs> Let's see what Megan had to say or do. Now I know my ladies in the crowd love they party. Real hot, girl. And if you want to keep loving your body, you know who to go for. Hey, 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 yeah. Body crazy, curvy, play. Yeah, yeah. Body crazy, curvy, play. We're not, I'm not going to get a copyright strike. But y'all just see what it is. Um, Meg is performing. Again, it's not really any shade towards her, but it just looks like a boondocks episode. And I think, really, people should be offended by that. The fact that... Is, why do they feel like the only way that they can communicate with black people is through, you know, rappers and entertainers and ass-shaking and, you know, it, it's just it's insulting. You know, again, this is not any shade towards Megan because you know, I guess maybe she was paid or asked to be there. I don't know. But it's like, what does body yada 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 what does that have to do with the campaign rally for voting for the next president of the United States? What does that song have to do with anything? I want to hear that song in the club. I don't want to hear it at the Democratic, you know what I'm saying, rally. I, I don't want her turning around twerking. Like it just it was just tacky. And again, it's not about Megan. It's about just the whole how everything just looks. And I seen a lot of people saying, well, you know, um, Amber Rose, who was, you know, the champion of the slut walk, was speaking at the Trump rally. And indeed she was. And like, y'all know I'm not a fan of Amber Rose either. And I've always caught out her slut walk, on, you know. But the difference is when Amber Rose got up there, she actually gave a speech. And she, it was actually well thought out. She presented herself well. It even made me look at her, you know, with a second glance, like, oh, shit, okay, Amber. She's actually saying some stuff that's heartfelt. She's talking about her father being in the military. And, you know, regardless of where she stands, she gave something that was from, like, her chest. She said it with her chest. She said it. It was in a classy way. It wasn't mixed in with hip-hop. She was up there just speaking as Amber Rose. Quavo was up there speaking from, like, a hip-hop perspective and standing on business and... It just, to me, it just came off as just, just hood and ghetto. You know what I'm saying? It didn't give professionalism. And again, it's no different than when Hillary Clinton was up there pulling hot sauce out her purse. I got hot sauce in my bag, swag. Bitch, what? Just talk to us about the policies. Let us know what you're going to do for us to get the vote and what you're going to do for people of color. We don't need you to drag out Meg Thee Stallion and have her twerking. I don't need Quavo up there talking about gun violence when his music reflects the same violence that he's crying about. So I just, I didn't like it. I just thought it was just tacky, you know? And it's like, stop trying to pander to black people using entertainers in the words of Malcolm X. No other race does that. You'll never have a Chinese person using K-pop stars, you know what I'm saying, as their political voice. What's his name? Uh, Xinping? <laughs> Child. <laughs> the CCP? Whatever his name is. Child. You know their president. They're not going to have K-pop people up there, you know what I'm saying, speaking for them. Russia is not going to have Russian pop groups and Russian singers up there speaking for Vladimir Putin. But it's like, why does the Democratic Party always do that? They're always trying to bring out some type of entertainer to, you know, to garner black people's votes. And at this point in time, black folks are tired. I was really, I was honestly really proud 
Oh, K-pop is Korean. I'm sorry, child. Whatever the, they call the Chinese singers. <laughs> what are the Chinese singers called? <laughs> she, uh, yes, Xi Jinping. That's his name. Excite. Xi Jinping. Thank you. C-pop? Oh, okay. All right. Well, they're not going to, you know, bring out C-pop people to talk for Xi Jinping. They're just not going to do that. So I just feel like I, I was really proud of the comments that I saw on social media. People were not here for it. They're like, this is not cool. You can talk to us. You know what I'm saying? We're, we're, we're well versed in politics. You don't have to bring out rappers. You don't have to bring out, you know, female rappers twerking. We don't need that. Even the crowd was looking bewildered and confused. Like the crowd wasn't even reacting because they weren't there for that. People are tired. These past four years, people are tired of what has gone on. This country has gotten worse over the past four years. We want to know about policies. We want to know about change. I don't care about Meg's body Adi song. I don't want to hear from Quavo. Hell, people want to know about the policies. So I just felt like it was just, it just came off as just lackluster. It came off like it was just a way to just pander for black votes. You had a lot of people saying, you know what? If they continue with this, I'm going to vote for Trump. If they continue with this pandering, I'm done. So the Democrats better, you know, come with a whole new game plan because people are not here for this foolishness. They're not here for the pandering. They want to know what's going to change between you coming into office versus Joe leaving office. That's what they want to know. So I just thought it was a bit much. I thought it was a bit much, you know, and again, no knock to, to Megan or Quavo, but I just feel like there are so many people who are so well versed in politics, you know what I'm saying, who run under the Democratic flag that they could have had up there, who could have really spoke to the people. And I get they're trying to, you know, get, you know, younger voters and stuff like that, but even younger voters, they want to know things that are going to help them in the future. Because a lot of these young people can barely afford rent. Let's keep it real. A lot of these young people are still having to live at home with their parents. And they're working hard. People like to say, oh, Gen Z's lazy. They don't want to work. They just want to be on TikTok all day. No. A lot of the Gen Z people that I know and that I deal with and hang with, they are some of the hardest working people. A lot of Gen Z people out here having two, three jobs just to make ends meet. So they don't want to see Meg the Stallion up there shaking her ass. They want to know what is going to change. What is their future going to look like? If you want to speak to the youth, you better speak to them in some real strong terms and let them know what they need to look forward to because right now they can't even afford housing okay so gen z is not as dumb as people want to make them out to be and a lot of them really are leaning more conservative to be honest with you because they're tired of the games so the democratic party y'all better figure something out because this nonsense Folks aren't here for it. The young folks aren't here for it. And the grown folks my age, okay? Millennials, Gen X, we're not, you know, the boomers. <laughs> them damn boomers definitely ain't here for that foolishness. So they better go to the drawing board and do something. Because that to me was just, that was embarrassing. It literally looked like a boondocks episode. It really did. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity, so sir, your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show, bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.